Welcome back, fellow humans, to the Scrub Lord channel. We got the continuation of my Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit slash Middle Earth franchise, I guess. If you haven't watched the other videos, I don't know, go check them out. If not, if you just want to hear my thoughts on the two towers, stick around. For right now, I don't do an ad break or anything, so we're going to keep going. I just finished the first half of two towers, and I'm here to talk about it. So... If you watched my fellowship video, wasn't the biggest fan. Did not really like Fellowship of the Ring. I started liking it towards the end, but I was a little iffy on it. So going into Two Towers, which was my least favorite of the movies, I was a little worried. You know? I'm like, oh shit. I, I'm not going to like this one at all. I'll be honest. My opinion changed a little bit. Now, I do have to say this. I said this kind of in the Hobbit video, and I said this in the Fellowship video. I'm, I don't really like how Tolkien writes. I am just not a fan of his style. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying you can't like it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, personally, I don't really love it. As I'm reading these books back to back, I'm getting more and more used to it, which might be why I'm liking Two Towers a lot. But there's just something about the way he writes that I'm just not interested in. And I don't know what it is, but in the middle of me reading this, me and a friend were talking about it, and he asked me what the Silmarillion is. And I was like, I don't really know. Let's look it up. And we were looking into, like, Silmarillion lore. And I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if this is a great way to explain it. I don't really have a great way to explain this. But something about the way Tolkien writes interests me more when I watch it through, like, a YouTube video or, like, read it on a wiki than when actually reading his books. And I don't know if other people have that problem or if that makes any sense or if I just sound really fucking stupid right now. I don't know. But that's just how I feel, uh, which is why I'm probably not going to read The Silmarillion. Maybe in the future. But definitely not right now. So getting that out of the way. I really like the first half of Two Towers. Um, for those who don't know, the back half of the book is all the Frodo and Sam stuff. And the front half, which is what I've read, is all the Aragorn, Gimli, Legolas, Merry, and Pippin stuff. Which, pacing-wise, is a little weird because... Um, and maybe this is... I haven't read a lot of old novels. So maybe this is how, like, old novels used to do a lot of stuff. But when you read, like, a new fantasy novel, typically the climaxes are happening at the same time. For instance, um, I'll use, like, the Stormlight Archives, right? When Kaladin is having... Like, the climax of Kaladin's arc is happening. The climax of Dalinar's arc is happening as well. Or they're coinciding and happening with each other at the same time. Whereas, with this, it feels weird because the book has climaxed. Like, we, I have gone through character arcs as well as story arcs. Like, they did the Battle of Helm's Deep. They went to Isengard, and then it just, like, cuts back to Frodo and Sam kind of just lollygagging around. And I haven't really read part two yet, so I don't really want to talk about it. But I just briefly wanted to mention that it feels a little weird, and I'll talk more about that in the part two section. But continuing the part one section, there were a lot less songs, which is my biggest complaint about Fellowship. Uh, and I feel like something I don't know if I mentioned, I can't remember, the characters, specifically Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, who show up in Fellowship in... Aragorn has a lot, but Gimli and Legolas aren't really fleshed out, I don't think. Start to get a lot more in Two Towers, and I really like I like their relationship sort of growing as they're chasing after Merry and Pippin. And I really, I kind of just like, the, I just really like the beginning. I don't, have, I don't really have any cons. The Riders of Rohan are cool. The Battle of Helm's Deep is great. Um you know Gandalf coming back is awesome like everything I really like about it I think if I had to pick a complaint about this part of the book is that the like battle of Isengard you know where the the Ents 
storm Isengard and like the flood happens happens off screen kind of like you don't see it and then later when Aragorn Gimli and Legolas show up and they meet Merry and Pippin again they're like hey tell us what happened and then Merry and Pippin explain it like they'd be explaining a story to a friend you know like if you were like hey man I went to class today like that's how they explain it and I was like I don't know just like show it from their perspective i think that'd be much more interesting especially because they're like two hobbits on the shoulder of like the oldest ent and the one leading the charge like i don't know i kind of want to see that from their perspective it's a bit odd that they like tell it to aragorn and gimli as a story felt weird um but other than that i like this the first half of this book a lot like I said at the beginning, Tolkien's writing just doesn't it doesn't click with me. I'm getting more and more used to it, which is making it easier to read the books. But like I'm not loving it. Uh, and that's really my thoughts on part one. So shortly we'll get into the thoughts on part two after I finish it, obviously. But for you guys, it'll happen in an instant. But I, I want to ask, uh, you know, if anyone who's watched this... Leave a comment. Tell me, like, if you had the same thing with Tolkien, where it's, like, the first time you read the books, you didn't really like the writing, and then maybe you reread them, and it grew on you. Because I'm not, like, opposed to that, especially, like, in audiobook form, sort of as, like, a podcast. Like, I wouldn't be opposed if, the you know, you commenters told me, like, hey, check them, check the audiobooks out. You It grows on you. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to doing that. And I'd probably make a follow-up video if my opinion did change. But uh, just, you know, let me know. Uh, and thanks if you do. So, let's get right into part two, I guess. Okay. Part two, I have finished The Two Towers. I gotta be honest. Being completely honest. Shit went hard. Goddamn. I don't know what I was expecting, but the Frodo and Sam stuff with Smeagol was just great. Uh, I guess a little update, because I think I mentioned this in the first part of this video. Still not the biggest fan of the way Tolkien writes. I, and I don't know if this is a hot take, but I think a lot of his characters kind of sound samey. Uh, and, and there's not many videos on this channel, but the thing I personally love about fantasy books and just books in general is when, like, characters sound extremely different. Where, like, when you're reading a chapter from a character's perspective, you know for a fact what character's perspective it is, even without the book telling you. Um... And I'm not saying Tolkien doesn't do that, but a lot of the segments here... Because he's kind of like... Tolkien almost writes like a... Um, sort of third-person narration. I don't know if that's technically what he does, but that's the way it reads. And I'm still just not... I don't think I'll ever truly be a massive fan of the way Tolkien writes. I just want to get that out of the way. That being said, the back of this book I thought was great. Like Frodo, Sam, and Smeagol, and they're like trek through just the shittest part of Middle Earth. Just the worst places. The swamps with dead bodies and like mountains and then Shelob's lair. Like it's just terrible. They're not having a great time. I really loved it. I really did. I thought it was great. Um, there were are some and Tolkien does this. I was going to mention this. A lot of his characters also are very long winded. Like they'll just drop like three paragraphs of dialogue just be like boom you know and it's just dropped and it's all like filled with lore and stuff I don't know I already said it but needless to say I'm just not the biggest fan of Tolkien's writing style and I never will be but I did really like this back half of Two Towers it was a little different from the movie which like Fellowship had a lot of different stuff but it was essentially still like the movie is essentially still that book and you can say the same thing for Two Tower but I think overall Two Tower has a lot of like Things are shifted, and, you know, just stuff happens differently, and, and I don't know. It's very weird. It's, it's interesting, I guess, seeing the differences between the movie and the book so far. But I did really like Two Towers. I liked it more than Fellowship, for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of things to say about it. I don't really have much to say about it. 
uh, except I love Sam. Sam is easily my favorite character in the movies, and he has, because of this part, become my favorite character in the books as well. He, he's just there to help Frodo. He does not care about anything else. Like, I don't know. I love Sam. I think Sam's great. Um, I don't really have much else to say. Like, I, I don't have much else to say. So, I guess I'm just going to end it with uh, thanks for watching. Well, I guess I'll do two things. In between recording the first part of this video and this part, I uh, put out the Fellowship video, which currently has, as of me recording this, I think 70 views, which is a decent amount for my channel. That's uh, a lot more than average. So thank you so much for watching that one and watching this one if you're still here. So I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know if you enjoyed it, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I guess... I'll see everyone in the Return of the King video when we end the Lord of the Rings franchise. So.